Welcome everyone. This is Michael with the Marx Group Live. Happy to be reviewing what Zoho Showtime can and can't do. After this video is over, please feel free to email us at support at marxgrouplive.com for any questions on this topic or on anything else Zoho. Also, be sure to rate this class as well. Helping out your fellow Zoho users and helping us to improve our video library. Showtime is Zoho's web conferencing and online virtual training system. Using Showtime, your learners can follow along with the live presentation. They can share your screen, request microphone access, like your slides, pose questions, answer polls, and provide feedback for your session. But of course, there are also things that Showtime can't do or things that it doesn't do particularly well. In this video, I'm going to touch on some of the best and frankly least best aspects of Showtime so that you can decide whether or not this is a training platform that's worth exploring. Specifically, we are going to look at how sessions are launched and created. We're going to look at participant control, content paywalls, session assets, interactive features, screen layouts, real-time control, uh, recording options, and platform support. This may look like a lot of ground to cover, but we will be efficient. Now, to help you out with your evaluation of Showtime, I will highlight which versions of the application give you access to each of the features as we look at them. One note of caution, though, you shouldn't regard this video as the last word on Showtime's features or capabilities for now. As of mid-2019, Zoho still has people working on Showtime, and there's a roadmap for further development. In fact, the Showtime admin portal still has a submit feature request at the bottom left side of the button bar, so some of the shortcomings that I highlight in this video might be fixed in the months to come, and there may be new features that I haven't even heard about. Um, if you're watching this video and you would like an update on the current state of Showtime, send a quick email to us and we will review any changes in the platform. That said, let's get into it. Scheduling is good. Setting up a schedule in Showtime is mostly easy, depending on how many details you think you need to specify. There's a lot of power if you need it, but you can launch, uh, sorry, you can set up and launch a session in a matter of seconds. I shouldn't name names, but I've had the misfortune of working with a very popular web conferencing system that just makes me want to hit my head on the blackboard because setting up a session requires far too many mouse clicks. Showtime's Create Session screen is much easier to use. Let's set up a launch remote session right now, complete with a presentation and a poll, and I'm not going to time this, but it won't be long. We'll call this demo seven, create session. Uh, I will pick my first demo presentation. That's my presentation. And I'm going to uh, choose several polls. In fact, I'll even choose all of them. There we go. I'm going to launch my session. Zoho checks to see whether it has access to my camera and my audio. And this looks like it's not working, but in fact it is. Uh, the reason it reports that my video camera is not accessible is because another application is using it, specifically the application that I'm using to record this lesson or this class. So I'm just going to go ahead and click OK. I'm going to continue. And I'll start the broadcast. That's how fast, that's how quickly we can create uh, and launch a session. So full marks for, for Zoho in terms of simple scheduling. If you're running a session more than once with the same assets, then you can simply duplicate your session and change the time. It's very quick. Likewise, if you have set up complex paywall and user registration policies, duplicating a session is an incredibly powerful way to get your sessions set up quickly and correctly. I actually am going to get out of that session right now. Let's end that session. I'm going to go back to sessions and I'm going to create a new session calling it demo eight. 
Right. So, participants and registration. I mostly like how Zoho handles this, but not entirely. Let's take a look at why and what's happening. On the plus side, there are lots of features. As the learning coordinator or the host of a session, you have lots of control. Here on the registration page, we can force registration that collects some user information, and we can enable either automatic or manual registration down here. We can also redirect participants to another web page after they've registered. We can also invite people by email. Under the email people tab, this is where also where we can get the session details and to put into an email or to send via text. So I can email people there. I'll get back to that in a moment. I can import contacts or I can put this window away. Uh, I can edit my invite invitation email. I can copy the session details and paste them into an email. And then people just have to copy that link or click on that link. And their web browsers will take them to the session. To embed the registration form, we have to go back to the registration page. There's the embed code for the registration form. Um, if you're curious about these functions, I do cover them in greater detail uh, on another lesson that should be in the video library on um, setting up a remote session or setting up a live session in Zoho Showtime. Uh, let's see, we can also get at this embed form under the Promote tab. There's the embedding the registration form or the session itself. And here, here, we actually see a weakness in the participant control uh, in Showtime. Some related features are scattered across multiple menus. In fact, uh, three different menus all have information on participant uh, and registration control. Uh, a bonus feature, however, that we looked at, uh, that we uh, skimmed over very quickly there, a bonus feature is that if you're using Zoho CRM and you're on the uh, professional or enterprise versions of Showtime, you can connect your CRM to Showtime. Once you've made that connection, you can invite some or all of the people from your contacts or leads modules, and once they've attended a Showtime session, that session will be visible in their CRM records. This could be a very powerful feature in terms of converting leads or in terms of providing ongoing customer support to your contacts and your accounts. Let's get back to our session. Uh, next up, paywalling content. The content paywall is available in professional and enterprise versions. This is a useful fee for, feature for training and consulting organizations. Integrating a, a, a payment gateway with Showtime eases a lot of headaches around getting a bunch of different systems to talk to each other. Showtime's made it automatic. We just haven't set it up, as you can see here. Um, now let's talk about session assets, because session assets is kind of a big, a big issue. We'll talk. We'll, you will use the broadest sense of the term, and I'll discuss each in turn. Uh, for starters, there's the trainer's voice and video. At least in the context of a remote session, the face-to-face -face session option does not allow for camera input and doesn't record voice either. Showtime makes it possible to share a screen, which is a nice feature. You can also have the presentation of some kind either in PowerPoint, PDF, or native format, uh, native Zoho format, that is. And this is available in all versions of Showtime. In the standard version or higher, there's a basic whiteboard that you can put use to jot notes and do freeform work in graphics and text. And finally, you can have polls, uh, quite a lot of them, if you want. Now, I regard this as a passing grade for session assets in this Showtime, but not more than that. 
I love the polls. They're nicely done, and I could easily see myself doing those in classroom situation, provided I ever allowed my students to have access to their electronic devices during the class. But for the rest of the session assets, let's dig in and see where the problems lie. Let's go to this screen. First, big problem. We can load up a presentation. That's one presentation, not two, not five, or even three. For strictly focused sessions that are probably quite short, this is not a serious limitation. But for a longer class, you'll need to create one very large presentation because you can't switch from one presentation to another in mid-class. Second, when I ask Showtime to load up a presentation, it will do that. Let me go to my next, next section. When I load up a present, uh, presentation from my Zoho uh, documents folder, uh, it doesn't look into folders. It can't traverse or it can't access folders. It just looks at all of the uh, presentation files that are on the root uh, level of the drive. Um, next up, finally, if I'm conducting a session, I might want to share some content with my participants, but uh, in other words, files that they can download. But Showtime doesn't do this yet. A few weeks ago, I sent an email to Zoho asking whether these observations were valid. Maybe I thought oh, I could be just missing something. Uh, they responded that I was correct, and these are, in fact, limitations um, of Showtime. However, they also said that the ability to load multiple presentations into a single session is a feature that's on their roadmap. Uh, they said that they would look into the possibility of allowing Showtime to handle folder structures. And finally, they are actively working on a feature whereby the trainer can upload files, which participants can then download during a session. This feature will be called Handouts, and I'm told that it should be available sometime in the second half of 2019. So where does that leave our session assets? Eh. I think it's a mostly in an okay state, mostly, with the possibility that things will get better as new features are rolled into the application. Now let's take a quick look at Showtime's interactive features. I, I would say that this is where Showtime really shines. There are polls. There are questions that may be public to the rest of the class or private between trainer and participant. In a remote session, you can chat privately with some students or to the entire class or to one student. And participants can upvote or downvote answers to questions and they can like slides. After a session is completed, participants can rate your class and leave comments or respond to multiple choice questions or Likert scales or do all of these things. So I would suggest that full marks for Showtime's interactive features. Now, if interactivity is a, a strong point for Showtime, then screen layout, whoops, wrong, not quite there yet. Screen layout is a weakness. A remote session offers the greatest power, so I'll use that as a reference point. I can have my image on the screen and a presentation or a poll or a chat or a screen share, but really I can't put more than one thing on the screen at any given time. On the one hand, this is good for presenters who are perhaps easily confused by having too many options. By contrast, uh, this, uh, the platform that I'm using for this lesson, here we go, this one is called OBS, Open Broadcaster Software. It allows me to integrate images, still, uh, still images, text, screen share, video camera, presentation, and more. I've, I've embedded videos in some of my sessions. I've embedded audio. I can mess with geometry almost completely, and then I can switch between screens with the press of a button. Uh, let's see if we can demonstrate that. There we go. There's another screen. Yeah. So some of the screens have uh, some of the screens have videos embedded in them. Uh, some I can add text. 
I can move things around. Let's see if I can do this while I'm recording. Can I grab this? No. Okay, I can't move things while I'm recording, uh, but I can certainly turn things off and on while I'm recording. This is the kind of power that uh, the Open Broadcaster software allows, and that's why we use it for tra our training sessions at Mark's Group Live. Uh, Showtime can't actually do quite that. On the other hand, moving forward, let's see, let me get my mouse in the right window here. Uh, so screen layout, good if for beginners, maybe not so great for seasoned uh, presenters who want more flexibility. Next up, real-time control, professional and enterprise versions. Let's go here. Professional and enterprise versions of Showtime allow for the presence of a second trainer. As I mentioned earlier, Showtime has a lot of interactive features, and this can easily overwhelm a single trainer, particularly if the trainer is not already familiar with conducting an orchestra or being a one-man band or a one-person band. So Zoho made it possible to have two trainers running a single session. That means that one can handle participant questions while the other can go through the presentation material, or they can swap off. This is a brilliant feature. Um, so we're nearly done. So let's consider recording options that are available in professional and enterprise versions. Showtime allows you to record both remote and face-to-face -face sessions. The quality is native resolution, so it's 1280 by 720 pixels. Depending on the work that you're doing, this could be kind of nice or incredibly useful. And finally, I will mention platform support. I have not tested all the combinations yet, but thus far, Showtime has proven itself to run well on a variety of operating systems and web browsers. I've tested Mac OS X and Windows 10, and Firefox, Edge, Opera, Chrome all appear to have worked well. It's also worked with Safari, OmniWeb, and Vivaldi. So if you want to use PowerPoint on Windows, Showtime will work fine with you. On the other hand, you can avoid both Microsoft and Google and still get the job done. And of course, in addition, to all those choices, your learners have access to either an iOS app or an Android app uh, to provide all the functionality that they would normally get in the web interface uh, as participants in a Showtime lesson. So that is our quick tour. Oh, let me get full, full marks there for platform support. So that's our quick tour of Showtime's best and worst features. Is Showtime the right choice for your training needs? I hope that this video has helped you get closer to a decision on that. As I noted, there are things that Showtime does really well and areas where it still needs improvement. If you're still curious about Showtime or about any of Zoho's products, uh, let us know or check out our video library for other training videos like this one. If you have any suggestions for other classes or for questions that you may have about Zoho, email us at support at marksgrouplive.com, and thanks very much for viewing.